Hi, my name is Matthew Lolte Hepworth, and this video is a companion to our full review of the neat King Bee and Worker Bee microphones that you can find at Ask.audio. So let's take a look at the microphones that were used in this audio comparison. First, we have the Neat Worker Bee, which is $199. We also have the Neat King Bee at $349. The Aston Origin, which is $249, and finally the Audio Technica AT4050, which is $699. The neat microphones are both manufactured in China, the Aston Origin is manufactured in the UK, and the Audio Technica was manufactured in Japan. Now let's take a look at the setup configuration of all the microphones. You can see that all of the microphones were arranged as close together as possible and the Rainsong WS-1000 guitar that was used during the recording was placed about 12 inches away from the microphones to minimize any sort of proximity effect and to most accurately represent what the microphone sounded like on the source. All of these microphones have almost a one inch diaphragm for their capsules, except for the Worker Bee, which is 0.94 inches, and the King Bee, which is 1.34 inches. So it's quite a bit larger than the others. All of these microphones have a fixed cardioid pickup pattern, with the exception of the Audio Technica, which was placed in cardioid mode for this test, but does have multiple patterns. So here in Cubase we have the recordings of all four microphones using the same guitar and the same take. And this way we'll really be able to hear the difference between the characteristics of all of these different microphones. And like I usually state in these comparisons, we're not trying to pick out the best sounding microphone. We're just going to be listening to the different voices that each of these microphones provides. Because they all have specific nuances and very nice characteristics. So it's just a matter of which one you think sounds the best. And here's the cool part. I'm not going to tell you which microphone is which during this comparison. I'm only going to reveal that at the end of the video. Now there is no processing on any of these tracks. What we're going to be listening to is the raw capture of the guitar recording. However, I did make one small post-production move and that's because the performer that played the guitar did some body knocking and on some of these microphones it just sounded boomy. So if we were to look at each of these guitar tracks and look at the EQ, you can see that I've applied an 80 hertz high pass filter on every single track. So that's the only post production that we've done on all of these microphones. And it was done in post production to keep that high pass filter absolutely identical between all of the microphones. So let's start by listening to microphone number one and then we'll have a look at its frequency response in just a moment. So now let's take a look at the frequency response of microphone number one. You can see that it has a very nice flat frequency response between about 120 hertz and then starts to boost a little bit just past two kilohertz. And it rises smoothly up to about the 12 kilohertz mark and then it starts to slope back down as it approaches 20 kilohertz. On the low end of the frequency spectrum, we can see that it does start to roll off a little naturally at 120 hertz and continues down until it hits about 50 hertz. So now that we have seen that microphone frequency response, let's listen to microphone number one again. Now let's have a listen to microphone number two. So I'm going to hit stop and rewind and let's listen to that microphone.
Now let's look at the frequency response of microphone number two. It also is mostly flat in the low and high mid-range frequencies. If we look at the low frequencies, and just ignore that lower line because that only depicts what the microphone's high-pass filter does to the frequency response. And if you look above that line, we can see that this has a pretty amazing low frequency capture ability all the way down to 20 hertz at 0 dB. And then there's a little bit of a bump that centers around 50 hertz. And then as it goes through 100 hertz and all the way up to 5 kilohertz, it only gets slightly noodly. And then there's a bit of a boost at about 6 kilohertz, and then it settles right back down at 8 kilohertz. But then there's another boost at 10 kilohertz, and another tiny boost at 15 kilohertz. And then the microphone starts to roll off as it approaches 20 kilohertz. And now that we've seen that frequency response of microphone number two, let's have a listen to that track again. Now let's have a listen to microphone number three. Now let's look at the frequency response of mic 3. You can see that it also has a very flat low and high mid-range, but the low end is a little bit deceiving on this graph because it looks like it drops off pretty dramatically. However, look at the frequencies down there. It doesn't start to roll off until 50 hertz and only gets close to minus 10 dB as it approaches 20 hertz. So it does have a very rich low end and if we look at the higher frequency responses, just past one kilohertz, there starts to be a slope that goes up until about eight kilohertz, then a tiny dip, and then another little boost as it approaches 10 kilohertz, and then starts to slope down towards 20 kilohertz. Now that you have seen that frequency response graph, let's listen to microphone number three again. And now let's listen to microphone number four. Now here's microphone 4's frequency response, and this one is really unique. I've never really seen this before. The kind of lasagna noodly frequency response isn't the weird thing. 
What is weird is that it never actually rides along 0 dB like we're used to seeing as a 0 dB reference. And also, it doesn't go all the way down to 20 hertz, nor does it go all the way up to 20 kilohertz. In the spec sheet, it does capture 20 to 20 kilohertz. Be that as it may, let's look at the frequency response between 70 hertz and 15 kilohertz. You can see that it does have a bit of a waver. It captures those low frequencies quite well, and it actually starts at 70 hertz at plus 10 dB. Then it starts to slope down a little bit. There's a bit of a bump at 300 hertz a bit of a dip at 500, a bit of a boost at 1 kilohertz, then it settles back down at 2 kilohertz, then it starts a gradual slope up all the way to almost 8 kilohertz until there's a little bit of a dip at 10 kilohertz and a little boost at 12 kilohertz, and then it starts to slope down after 12 kilohertz. Don't know exactly how radically it slopes down. But that's the frequency response of microphone number four, and now that you've seen that, let's take a listen to that microphone again. And now what I'm going to do is rewind and start with microphone number one and bounce between the playback of all of those tracks so you can make a quick comparison between the sound of each of these microphones, starting with microphone number one. And let's do that one more time, but I'll go in opposite order. Now, if you want to download these files so that you can listen to them on your own studio monitors, they will be posted as part of our review at Ask.Audio. But now I'm sure you're dying to know which microphone was which track during this comparison. Well, I decided to go in manufacturer alphabetical order. So microphone number one was the Aston Origin. Microphone number two was the Audio-Technica AT4050. Microphone number three was the Neat King Bee. And microphone number four was the neat worker bee. And just to review which microphone was which inside of Cubase, microphone number one was the Aston Origin. Microphone number two was the Audio Technica AT 4050. Microphone three was the neat King Bee. And finally, microphone four was the neat worker bee. So thanks for watching, and now jump back over to Ask.Audio for our full review of both neat microphones. My name is Matthew Lolte Hepworth, and thanks for watching.